All right, so for today's session, we're going to be talking about, uh, about cutting the cord. And this is a class that we've taught before in person, but it, as I said, it's really a good class to also do online. And the reason for that is there's a lot of things that we're looking at uh, that have web links. And when we do the PowerPoint, sometimes it's hard to get to those. So I think that this will really, I think you'll enjoy this. Okay, let's start off with just an overview of what we're going to be talking about today. When we talk about cutting the cord, we're talking about replacing your current cable subscription and instead um, choosing your own content. So basically cutting the cord means getting rid of your cable. It doesn't mean getting rid of your internet. You'll still need internet um, if you wanna watch different things on TV. So basically when you wanna cut the cord, eliminate your cable subscription. Uh, you wanna, there's basically four things to consider. One of them is your home internet provider. We don't have a lot of choices on that. One is the, the second is the hardware that you will use to stream your media. The third is the services that you will want to use in place of your cable. And then the last step is the easiest one and that's watching your content based on everything that you have done. Okay, now before we can actually get to the, to the meat of our lecture, we first have to talk about streaming data. This is something that is confusing for a lot of people, including me. You have talk about data, you talk about speed, and then you talk about the amount of it. The speed is also referred to as internet speed, and that's how quickly information is transferred to your device. So when you test your speed, you'll find two numbers. You'll find the upload speed and the download speed. When they talk about upload, that's how much speed um, you have to take something from your device, like a picture from your computer, and upload it, send it up to another site, say, for example, Facebook. Uploading speeds are much slower usually than downloading speeds, but the good news is we don't usually have to upload large amounts of data. Sometimes we do, but most times we don't. So downloading speed is more something that we're interested in. And that is the kind of speed that you'd want if you were to eliminate your cable because you'd want to be able to see the um, stream, the, the movies and the television shows and things like that. So speed is influenced by your router. Certain routers are, are faster than others. If your router is top of the line, then you can get the most from your speed. If it's an old router, a few years old maybe, you may not be getting the speed that you could. Uh, the speed is also influenced by how many devices are being used at that time. If you live in a household where many people are online at the same time, and not only are they just surfing the web, which doesn't really need a lot of speed or data, but they might also be doing these Zoom calls, which do take a lot of speed, um, or maybe they are uh, editing photos, or maybe they're, you know, just anything that requires them to, uh, to be accessing the internet. And then the other, the other thing that influences is the definition. So if you are streaming movies to your phone, you can just use a standard version of that movie. But if you're streaming a movie to your 4G TV, well, that would require a lot more data. So those are the things that influence your internet speed. And you can see some numbers here. So if you have one device, say a laptop, and you're streaming a movie on that laptop and it's just in standard definition, it doesn't need a lot of speed, just two megabits per second. But if you have several people that are also on, the, on their device in your home and you're all streaming a movie or music or doing a video call, well, that those numbers go up. And it, the speed, it isn't a cumulative thing, so you don't have to worry about if, if one person is using it at eight o'clock and one person's using it at 10 o'clock, it's not like a cumulative thing for speed, it's simultaneous. So how many things can be done at once? So keeping that in mind, even if you do a lot of high data 
um, things such as Zoom. If it's just you, then you can probably get by with the minimum package, which is somewhere between 25 and 50 megabits per second. That's a good, that's a good number. If, however, you have multiple devices, multiple people in your home, uh, doing multiple things, if you have kids living with you, then they might be streaming a movie they, at the same time, they might be conversing with someone on Facebook, you know, the, all these things can add up uh, during that time. Um, now, some people are concerned if I have faster speed, am I going to be using more data? And the answer is no. You, you aren't using more data, it just gets delivered faster. If you have too many things you're doing at once, then you might not have enough speed to push everything to you. And in that case, you experience buffering. And that's when you see that little circle going around and everything kind of pauses and freezes. That's buffering. And you might even notice that in these conference calls because as we said, a lot of these calls do take quite a bit of data. So sometimes you will notice that. By the way, if you are doing these type of calls and you have a very weak internet connection and it does keep slowing down for you or, or buffering, you can always do things like turn off your video and that will use less data. Um, there is a test that you can go to called highspeedinternet.com. When you go to this test, you would click on your residential and then you would go through a series of steps to discover how many devices you have, how much you use them, et cetera, and it will give you a minimum speed. And so when we've done this, even just giving a, a blanket, you know, a few devices and things, it doesn't usually go much over 30. So 30 is a good basic number for most people, unless you live in a house full of people that are technology um, driven. There, this is a short video and we're not gonna watch it, but you can go back and watch it later. And it just explains a little bit about internet speed. And maybe you wanna watch the video before you take the test. It will explain why you need the internet speed you have. It will explain a little bit about the difference between uploading and downloading and that kind of thing. Now, um, just as a, as a reminder, living in San Diego, we have three choices, but depending on where we live, we don't get all three of those choices. So AT&T, Spectrum, and Cox, all of them are options for us in San Diego. Um, however, if you don't have the fiber, the AT&T fiber, your speed is very slow for AT&T. So just keep that in mind. If you have AT&T, you might not have enough speed to, to have a good um, online experience. But Spectrum and Cox do, and if you are able to get that fiber, then you'll have plenty of speed there. Okay, not only speed, but there's also the amount of data. Now this is something we've always sort of been concerned about on our mobile devices, you know, not using your phone to stream too much video because we already know that consumes data but we wonder whether that has anything to do with your home internet, and usually it doesn't. So what, the, what streaming data is, the amount of data, it's how much data you're consuming. So you've got, the, you've got it coming into you, and then the other part of it is how much, how much is there. So if you are, again, using something like, like Zoom, there's a lot of data being used, and that is data that you are consuming. It isn't data that you're taking to your device and storing it. It's streaming. It's any way the data comes in that is measured in the amount. So that data is measured in its speed and also the amount. Now, this measurement is not a per second thing, but it's more of a fixed number like gigabytes. And most of us don't have to worry about it. But here's a little note here. Um, because of the fact that we're now kind of isolated in our homes and because of the fact that many of us are using these type of platforms to communicate, all of our major providers have waived the data limits that we have on our home internet um, in response to this virus. Now, you might recall me telling you a, a few weeks ago that I had a little bit of an issue when I switched to a different cloud storage and all of a sudden, I reached my max in data, the amount of data. 
um, that's something that could have happened to many of us if this would if this might have um, happened in your home. But the good news is there's no data limits right now. So you don't have to worry about your limits. Uh, otherwise, if you're a Cox customer, you are your limit is one terabyte. And after that, they charge you per gigabyte per 50 gigabits, I think. Uh, Spectrum, good news for Spectrum users, you have no limits. And that's because you were recently bought um, or they recently bought Spectrum, bought um, Roadrunner, and then and then, as part of the deal, they said there would be no data limits. So Spectrum, you could use as much internet as you want. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about the data. Now we want to talk about the router. Now what we're looking at here is quite a bit of uh, terminology that might be a little confusing. I think the, the big things to think about is if you have an old router, it might be time to get a new router. And the reason for that is that we have our home, smart home devices, we have you know, things like Zoom now, we've got streaming media, and of course, if you're gonna cut the cord, you've got more things there. And a router will determine how fast you'll get that data. So with, with a, a router that is not up to date, you might find that, that you're getting a lot more buffering, maybe that your signal isn't reached in the other area of the house. So getting a good router is very important. Um, there are certain protocols for routers, and the best way to explain it is that the 802.11, they're all gonna have that protocol. Uh, these last two letters, uh, you can see AC, you might see N, you might see B. AC is the newest technology, N is a previous one, and the B is previous to that. It doesn't make any difference if you're using the same devices that, that have been successful in the past, those devices are set up for whatever protocol was available at that time. So an old device, won't benefit if you get a brand new router with AC technology and you're using a laptop that's six years old, chances are it's not gonna be able to take advantage of that extra um, ability. But if you're thinking on upgrading your equipment, that's when you wanna think about upgrading your router as well. Um, so if you, if you choose to upgrade your router, you might as well aim for the most recent pro, uh, protocol which would be 802.11 AC. Okay, then the other thing you look at when you look at, um, at routers is single band and dual band. Actually, is also tri-band. Okay, single band, there are not many of them available anymore. Think of the freeway and then think of the commuter zone, the commuter line, lane. Okay, so the freeway is nice and fast. It's good for most of us. But when there's a lot of traffic, it gets clogged up. And if we have a commuter lane, that can go much faster. But it's a little bit more narrow, so it doesn't have as much um, range. So with our routers, it's kind of the same. When you have a dual band, you will be able to have one frequency on one band and one frequency on the other band. So you can have 2.4 gigahertz on one, and you can have 5 gigahertz on the other. And now um, you're probably familiar with this because at Mira Mesa and also in our Monday class at the library, when we go to sign into the network, we know that there's two networks. We know that there's the regular one and then there's one that's five gigahertz. So we can get on to either one. They both use the same password. And what usually happens with these routers is that they direct the traffic based on where all the traffic is. So in your homes, you don't have to say, oh, I want to go on my, my five gigahertz um, network or my 2.4. It will automatically choose it for you. Um, so if, if you are cutting the cord though, I do recommend that you get that tool bit dual band. Uh, if, and like I said, I don't think there's many single bands available. Now you might hear about a tri-band, that would be three bands. And yes, that's nice, but at this point, it's not as necessary yet. However, if you're thinking on moving up, you might consider that tri-band. Um, the speed of the router. 
All right, so when you, when you go to purchase your router, you'll see labels, and I've already explained the AC label. That is, that is the protocol, the most recent protocol. So when you go to find your, your router, you'll see AC, and then you'll see numbers. So the higher the number, the more uh, maximum speed there is. Um, so a 1200 router, it may be dual band, but it only offers 2.4 gigahertz on each band, and the maximum speed would be 600. So, so that basically the, the, what that is telling you is that, the, as we said, the 2.4 gigahertz is a little bit slower, um, but it's, it's wider. So if you have a 1200 router, you do have two different highways for it to travel on, but it's not quite as fast. All right, now if you have a 1750, well then that would give you a 2.4 gigahertz, uh, one band with 2.4 and one band with five, and you could see that the five gigahertz band would be much faster. So a number like 3200 would probably have an additional five gigahertz band. So the higher the number, the more speed you have. But keep in mind that is limited to the amount of speed you're paying for with your internet service provider. So if you're getting the very basic package, yes, you can get a AC 3200, but you probably wouldn't really be using it to its potential. It, it would be more apt if you were to purchase an internet package that had a very high amount of speed, like 100 gigabytes or more. Okay, prices. Uh, they could be expensive, they could be $400 or more, or they could be kind of reasonable, depending on where you live, depending on the size of your home, depending on what you use it for. You, you could probably get by with as little as $100, and you might, um, you might spend a little bit more if you want more features. Uh, there's something called a gigabyte, gigabit router. And that would be almost like the, when we're talking about the, the five gigahertz band, that one's gonna be even faster than that. And again, that's, if you have the, a fiber network, like, like the uh, AT&T fiber, you might benefit from that because fiber is much faster than cable. But if you don't have fiber, it's probably not necessary at this point. But you know, that could change at some point. Okay, you also wanna consider the range. So you have your router and you probably, it, ideally you have it in the center of your house. Ideally you have it up high because the signal travels, you know, in the air. So ideally you have it up high. Um, and ideally it's not around anything that's going to block the signal like wall and walls are going to block it, but right on, under a desk or with a big um, glass wall behind it, that's going to impact the signal. So you want to have it in as clear a pathway as possible. That said, it may not reach everywhere. So your router may not have the strength to reach from one end of your house to the other. And so in that case, you want to look at some options. And one of the options are range extenders. So the way that works is you plug that in to some spot between your router and the farthest part of the house that you're trying to reach you're trying to get the, the uh, signal to reach to. Now, when you, uh, when you plug it in, you have to keep in mind that the signal that it's going to be extending is the signal that reaches that range extender. So when you're in the office where your router is, your signal is nice and strong. As that signal travels through your house and it gets to maybe your kitchen, it's maybe 50% as strong. If you put a range extender in your kitchen where it's 50% as strong, it can only extend that 50%. It can't extend 100%. So range extenders may not be as effective for some homes. Another option is a power line extender, and that's what I used for, for a couple of years, but they're now becoming a little bit obsolete. But they um, allow you to plug in one, you, you'll, you'll plug in one end to your router, you'll attach it to the router, and then you'll put the other end anywhere in the house and it will give you the, the, the signal as strong as it is where it's plugged in because it's gonna be using your existing power line. 
So again, that works, but, um, but it, it might be a little bit obsolete and it might not provide you with the coverage that you need, especially when you consider your smart home and the fact that you, know, you can't be unplugging it and plugging it back in all day long. So it, it isn't the best option, but it is an option. Okay, um, USB ports. So your, your router will come with anywhere between two and four ports where you can plug something in. Things that you would plug into your router include things like your, uh, your computer, your desktop computer, your printer. Uh, if you have one of those power line extenders or if you decide to have a mesh network on top of your router. So those are the different things that will plug into the router. And you're saying, what is a mesh network? That's our last thing here. Um, a mesh network works with your router and creates a signal that is strong anywhere in the house. It's, it's the power line extender times three. It's very, very effective. So I have the Google mesh network working with my router. And so in my router in my office, I have one connection that goes to my base for the Google mesh network. And then throughout the house in two different areas, I have one of the little, their little um, hubs or little dots things about that big and they provide 100% of the signal where they are. So this is the ideal thing for a long house that's all spread out that you just can't get that internet to reach. That's a really nice option. Now, unfortunately, they're a little expensive. Um, I think they're, I think two or $300, depending on which direction you go. But again, if you're trying to future-proof and you're trying to get something that will work with all your smart home devices, well, a hub network or a mesh network might be the, the way to go. All right, so there's, there's a little bit about, about the routers and the networks or the mesh networks. And here we have two links. So PC Magazine will oftentimes rate things. PC Magazine is a good, uh, pretty impartial source. They do earn some commission um, when you click on links. But their, their um, ratings are usually pretty, pretty good, pretty well done. And so you can see that this, this link takes us to the different uh, mesh network systems. And then the other link will take you to routers. And I know that the routers sound, sound very confusing, but um, the more you look at them, the better you're going to, to get at understanding them. So for example, as we look at this one, we can see that this one is an AC 5300. So you can see that that probably has, um, I'm not sure how many bands it has, but it has a number of different uh, ways for the speed to get through it. It's very speedy. It's, it's twice as fast as, as many of the others. Um, whereas this one is more of a, um, probably more of a, a standard one, budget friendly, dual band, easy to install, $100, but it might not be as fast, okay? So it's good if you have a budget. So you can see if you look on there, there's, here's one that's 1200, so that might be a little bit faster, another 1200. So these are good for people that don't use a lot of, um, of speed, that don't need a lot of speed. So you can see the prices really do range a little bit. Okay, now, so you have your router, and then what do you need next? Well, let's say you want to watch the local news. And if you want to watch the local news, if you eliminate your cable, it's not, you're not going to have that option necessarily. But what you can do is you can invest in, a, in an antenna, an HD antenna. Now these aren't that expensive. They could be, you know, as little as $40. Um, and you don't have to pay for anything after you buy the uh, antenna, that's it. You don't have to pay any subscription fees or monthly fees. Um, your channels will be free, just like they were before, before cable came along. Um, and the channel selections that you get will depend on where you live. So some areas of town, depending on whether you live in a, in a valley or up on a hill, that may influence the type of channels you get with your antenna. So if you find that your favorite stations are quite a ways away, 
you can invest in an amplified antenna, which can take that signal and extend it further. Um, that may cost a little bit more, but it might be worth it if these are things that you're interested in. And again, rem remember these are one-time charges. Okay, the antenna should be kept high um, in an upstairs room or an attic. Um, I, had, um, I had one in my living room and I just put it as high on the wall as I could. In fact, it was actually next to the window and that helped pick up the signal a little bit better. There's, there are more than one websites, but I chose this one to highlight. This website will tell you what, uh, what, air, what um, channels are available for you. So I just put in La Mesa here, and what you get is you get a uh, summary, and then you get a color code thing. So let's look at this color code thing. And if we see a channel in yellow, it means that you can get a pretty basic, not too fancy antenna and you could see those channels. Whereas if, you, if your favorite station is in violet down here and we start looking at them, well, you need a nice, large, multi-directional uh, antenna with an amplifier. So given that, let's go and see what you, what you get. So you can see here, you've got plenty of yellow possibilities. You've got... Um, XETV, you've got XUAA, you've got KUSI is there, uh, KSWB, KSN, KNSD. So all those are yellow. Uh, KPBS, you can get yellow. So those are, it's some of these, by the way, are Spanish channels, but, um, but those are all ones you can get with the very basic one. Now, if you wanted one that was a little bit, one of these channels, you might have to go up a little bit if you lived in La Mesa, on the type of antenna you have. You might have to go up to the abilities. And then here's the violet one. So you could actually get one that's 118 miles away, but you have to get one of the fancy antennas. And keep in mind also that it really does depend on where you live. So if you buy an antenna at one house and then you go and you move to another house, the antenna might not, be as, might not work as well. So keep that in mind. All right, so those are antennas. Um, you might also uh, have to determine when you go to look at the antennas, whether they will um, cover uh, UHF channels or VHS, VHF or both. Um, so uh, the UHF are the ones that have the larger numbers. So anything over 13, the, the one to 13 are VHF. Um, obviously, one that has UHF capability is going to be a little bit stronger than one that is just VHF. Um, the VHF, uh, most of the VHF stations are affiliates, which, mean that you'll, which means that you'll be able to get UHF with them as well. That's a little confusing. But I would say go to that website, put in your um, address, put in your zip code, and see what they suggest. Okay, once you, go to, once you get your antenna, you take it home, you plug it in, it attaches to your TV via the HDMI slot. Okay, so that is, a, that is on the back of your TV. And then you're gonna have to scan it using your remote control. So when you do that, uh, your TV might already be set up on a cable uh, input. You'll have to switch it to the antenna input just like you would switch your input if you had um, a DVD attached to your TV. You know, when you go to watch the DVD, you have to sort of switch um, with your remote and say, I want to watch a movie on DVD. It's the same with this. So you would switch to the antenna and then you would do what's known as an automatic channel scan. And they'll go through and they'll tell you all the different channels you have. Now let's say that, that the channels they tell you are different than the ones you thought you were gonna get. Well, you have options. You can take that antenna and move it a little bit, even just maybe just a foot or so in another direction. And that might help you get the channel that you want a little bit better. Uh, you might decide to get an amplifier and that will be able to, to, to give you a better reach as well. Uh, you can always return it and get a different one. So don't destroy the packaging if it isn't giving you what you thought you would get. But the bottom line with that is moving it around and playing with it will, might result in you getting uh, more channels. 
Another thing with that scan thing, you could scan at any time. Sometimes, and after you scan it, it sort of remembers those channels for you. But you may find that after a while, you might get different channels offered. So you can scan it more than once. Okay, so you've got your antenna, you've got, you have your router. Next, you need something to stream the TV or the, the shows, because what you're losing is you're losing the cable. So when you have cable, you can go to this station or that station. You're not going to be able to do that if you give up the cable. So you have to kind of think about a couple of things. First, you have to think about what do I watch? That's important because what you watch, you can probably find somewhere, but you but you'll have to, you know, have to find some way to, to find it and then to figure out how you're going to watch it. So these devices are going to be used to help you watch your content. Now, if you have a smart TV, you have one of these devices already built in. Most smart TVs have a Roku already built in. So what that means is when you turn it on, you see a menu with all these apps in it, and the apps are things like um, HBO or, or CNN or whatever those apps are. And those are, those are the apps that you are getting on your TV. Now, some of them, if you have, say, HBO, you, you can see the app there, but when you click on it, nothing happens, and that's because you haven't bought the service. And we're going to talk about the services after we do this. But going back to your smart TV, you've got all those apps, and those are all the different things that you can view. If you don't have a smart TV, you can get one of these streaming devices to help stream from either your device or from the internet using a remote control. So for example, this is a Google Chromecast right here, this device is. There's the HDMI slot that's gonna plug into your TV. When you, with your remote control, you're gonna keep clicking it until you find the input that matches the HDMI that the Google Chromecast is on. And then, and you're going to set it up to your home internet, so it's picking up the internet. And then you'll, you'll take your phone or your iPad or your computer, and you'll open up something like Netflix. And you'll see that it has this little icon that's a square with a few little circles inside. And that is the icon that refers to casting. Cast, C-A-S-T. So what it will do is you will open up that movie, you'll click on that icon, and the movie will all of a sudden cast to the TV and you can watch it there. So that's how the Chromecast works. Now the Roku and your smart TV is a little different. You can see you have a remote control. So you don't have to have a, a device to stream to. Instead, you have a remote control. And when your Roku is hooked up, it creates that menu on the TV, like you have if you have a smart TV. And once again, you can click on that box and Netflix or the Hulu or whatever it is you have, and then you can start watching content there. But of course, you, some of them you'll have to pay for. Other options, if you know someone that's a gamer and they play a lot of games, the Navita Shield is a good one. Uh, that's this one here. It is also good for watching 4K content. So if you have um, a movie that's in 4K that you want to stream, this might be a good option. You can see it comes with a remote control. It's got a, it's got a button for Netflix. Um, kind of a high-end one. It's a little bit expensive, $199. You can plug your media into this. So you can, you can have a, a, a video or something. You can plug into that and watch it from there. Uh, so again, uh, good for gamers, good for your own media, um, a little bit expensive. Okay, there's something known as an Air TV player. And the Air TV player is one that allows you to access broadcast channels. I've never used it, so I don't know if it gives you live TV, um, but it does uh, integrate with things like Sling TV and Netflix and Google Play. Now it has one other thing that a lot of these don't have and that's DVR support. So if you enjoy with your cable now being able to, to record shows, a lot of these services will not allow you to do that, but an Air TV player will. 
So if that's something that's important to you, you might want to consider getting that. And that will allow you to record the shows that you want to watch. Now, if you, you know, from class, you know that I use an Apple TV when I teach. This is an example of the Apple TV. And that plugs into your, into your regular TV. And then you have the remote control. And that is really good for streaming from your iPad or from your phone. Uh, it might, it's also good if you like to purchase things from iTunes, like movies from iTunes. This is pretty much the only way you can, you can cast those iTunes movies is using an, Air, an Apple TV. Um, the Apple TV will also let you control some of your home devices, your uh, smart home devices, with the Siri-enabled remote. Uh, $179, it's not cheap, but they're pretty nice and they're pretty easy to use. Um, another one is an Android TV box, and that's a smart box that connects to the TV and it transforms it into a smart TV. And then you can download apps or watch local TV. Uh, you can connect to streaming uh, apps like Hulu and, and Netflix. Um, so, you know, that's, that's another option. Then, of course, the, the final option is maybe one of the easiest. You can just take your computer or your phone and plug it into the TV using one of your connectors, HDMI or, or VGA or anything like that. And then you can watch it just from your um, device. So those are some of the options. I, I realize I didn't say anything about the Amazon Fire Stick. It's very similar to the Roku. Uh, you might find that you, you get your Amazon channels a little bit better, but these two are very similar. And with the Amazon, it also comes with remote control, so you do get that menu on the screen. And by the way, you can, from all of these, and well, from the Roku and the Amazon and the Smart TV, if there is a certain um, program that you use, say for example, Sling TV, and it's not on your screen, you can go to the app store and download it to your screen. So if, if something is missing from your menu, it doesn't mean you can't use it. You just have to go and download that app. Okay, so now you're slightly confused probably because we've described all those different um, things that you can use to stream, but we haven't told you much about what, you, what you'll be watching, except by throwing out a few things like Sling TV and Netflix. So let's talk a little bit about the services that you'll use. So these are the things that you're gonna be using instead of cable TV. <clears throat> now, I wanna preface this. So a lot of people say, I don't wanna give up my cable because I'm just gonna end up spending a lot more money on things that I don't need. Well, keep in mind, if you're paying for cable, I don't know what you're paying, but it could be you know, $250, $300 a month. Now, some of it you're not gonna eliminate. You're not gonna eliminate the internet. You need the internet. So you might still have to pay 100 a month for that. But for the rest, you don't need that necessarily unless you really, really watch every single channel. But the thing is, you might have 300 channels and nothing's on. I mean, but you might sit there in front of the TV and I would, I would click, click, click can't find a single thing I want to watch. So these streaming services, these particular choices do cost money, but, they, but you would have to pay for them anyway if you had cable. So if you had cable and you also wanted Netflix, you would have to pay extra for that. HBO, YouTube Premium, they all, you'd pay extra for them. So these are over and above what you would use for cable. Um, they do cost something but they have good content and they, they do make television watching a little bit more interesting. So Netflix, of course, is one of the, um, the, the more well-known ones. It's got its, all of these have their own library. So you might find some movies on Netflix, some on Amazon, some on Hulu, some on HBO. They're all a little bit different. Um, they have no commercials on Netflix or Prime or YouTube Premium or HBO, none of those have advertisements. So once you start watching these things, you're gonna get a little irritated by advertisements again. Um, they, if you really like TV, Hulu is an option there. So it does offer different TV shows, limited commercials. 
Um, and then there's the pay-per-view side. So maybe with your current cable subscription, you find yourself going to pay-per-view. You're paying each time you watch a movie on there anyway. Well, you can go to iTunes or you can go to Google Play uh, or now you can even go to Amazon or Netflix and you can pay to watch a, a, a newer movie. And sometimes, it, you know, it's not that much more, you know, maybe five or six dollars to watch this this movie. And, and the nice thing is, you know, you don't have to leave your home or do anything. Um, one more thing about these. So you can see that if you decided you wanted to use all of them, your costs may add up. But the beauty of this is you don't have to keep that subscription uh, forever. So for example, I have Netflix periodically. I'll have it for a while and then I'll stop watching it and I'll cancel it. And then I'll decide there's something I wanna see again, so I'll get it again. And you can do that with all of these subscriptions. You don't have to keep a subscription going. Many of these you can also share with people. So if you have, um, say for Netflix, notice that there's a range. If you're paying the top fee, you can share it with, they call them family, but they don't have to be in the same household. So you can share it with different people in different areas. Sometimes it has to be in the same geographical area, but not always. Amazon Prime, you're looking at that 119 a year and you're going, oh my gosh, that's pretty expensive. But the beauty of Amazon Prime is it's not just movies and TV. It's also music, it's also books, and it's also when you buy something, now granted these days it's a little slower, but most times when you buy something on Amazon and you're a Prime member, it gets delivered the next day or two days. So it's really that if you like to order online and you like a variety of things, it's a real deal. It's really nice. Um, YouTube Premium, so I actually bought that. Um, and the reason is, if you, if you watch a lot of YouTube, and I tend to watch a lot of YouTube videos because I use them in my classes, and so I would go to look up uh, different videos that I could use each week, and I would have ads. I'd have to sit through three different ads, each one of them a minute or two minutes or three minutes, and it just got to be too many ads. And so I invested the $12 a month and now I don't have any ads. So if you tend to watch a lot of YouTube videos, usually they're shorter, you know, so in order to watch a, a short video to have to sit through five minutes of ads, it just gets very frustrating. So those are some of the options. Those are streaming services. They're all unique. And once again, you don't have to keep your subscription current. You can go from subscribing to not subscribing. Okay, so you got rid of your cable. Maybe you want something to replace it. Something that is more versatile. Um, so compare something like Amazon Prime that has just a few things on it. I mean, it has a lot of movies, but it doesn't necessarily have all the TV shows you like. You're missing all those TV shows. You love TV. What do you do? Well, you try one of these cable replacement services. And maybe one of the best is Sling TV. So Sling TV, you don't need a special device for that. You could download the app to your smart TV or to your Fire Stick or, or whatever. Um, and then you just go and you decide what you, what you wanna watch and then you pick the Sling package. Now, I'm not sure if Sling has changed. It's only, yesterday I noticed it was only showing us Sling Blue. And they used to have Sling Orange and Sling Blue. And the difference was the different channels that were offered. But you can see here, if, if you like TLC, or you watch a lot of Fox News, or CNN, you know, maybe that's what, or NBC. So these are some of the things that you watch quite a bit. If you bought the Sling Blue package, and I think it's $25 a month, then you get these 50 channels. So it's, it's a lot cheaper than buying the whole cable. And if these, if, if these are the channels that you tend to watch, then this is really a nice option for you. So you don't have to live on movies. You can also watch documentaries and things like that. So that is, uh, that's Sling, and that's one of the more, um, the more uh, versatile ones that we have available. Um, there's also PlayStation View. You do have to buy a device, which costs $40.
but this one will allow you to see those local channels. So if you really want to see those CBS 8, ABC 10, and, and ESPN and AMC, those are ones that you can get with the PlayStation View. So that's $45 a month, which is a little bit steep, but it does offer you uh, a variety of things. Um, you could also add things on to that. So you can add on a sports pack for an additional $10 a month. Um, Hulu with live TV, we showed you Hulu up here was only $8 a month. Down here, we're looking at $40 a month. But what you get now, see Hulu is good for television shows and for other, other um, specialty movies and things like that. Um, with Hulu with live TV, you have unlimited access to everything in their streaming library, some commercials, uh, and then you get the full seasons of series and movies and more. So we're using a trial version of Hulu right now. And I've started watching This Is Us, which I had never seen before because it was on TV and I cut my cable a while ago. So I'd never seen it. It's a pretty good show, This Is Us. So you're able to get that through Hulu and you could see all the different seasons. You could binge watch them. In fact, that's one of the great things about cutting the cord is it, it allows you to take these shows and it used to be I'd have to wait a whole week to see a next episode. You can just watch them one right after the other if you want. And I'm not saying you should sit in front of your TV and watch one TV show after another. You shouldn't do that, but it is convenient to have that option. Okay, so that's Hulu with live TV. And then there's YouTube TV. That's $40 a month, but if, if you have a significant other that really wants their sports, this is one to consider. So this one includes CBS Sports and Fox Sports. It also has movies. It has um, lots of different options there. And it has that unlimited DVR feature. So you could record things. So if, you're, if your significant other wants to watch the big game and you want to go out to dinner, well, they can record that and watch the big game later. So YouTube TV is another option, and YouTube TV is also one of those, like, like others, that you can share with other people. So maybe cut the cost down a little bit by sharing it with a couple of people. So those are some of the different cable replacement services. And then now you've got the ones for sports lovers. And the thing is, even if you have cable, uh, cable probably does not offer uh, the NFL games as they're occurring or the baseball games. So these are all ones if someone is really a major league baseball fan or a hockey fan or basketball or football, these are all the packages you can get. Now, some of them will not cover that live game. Some of the games, like I think remember from maybe the Chargers, if someone is, um, if, if a game is, is local, you might not be able to get it on your uh, game pass until after the game is over. But nevertheless, these are really nice um, packages for people that like sports. Okay, and then this is where it gets kind of fun. So you do get to watch movies. You can watch movies for free. Now, granted, not all the movies you wanna see, but you can watch a lot of them for free. So I want to look at Crackle for, as an example. So Crackle is a free site. Um, you, can, you can see that it won't necessarily be the most um, up-to-date movies, but nevertheless, there are movies, there are seasons, um, uh, TV shows. Uh, look Who's Talking Now, that was um, an incredibly weird movie, <laughs> but you can watch that on there. Um, you can watch uh, these, Ghosts of Mars. You could see old TV shows. Um, and Star Trek, you could see Star Trek. Godzilla 2000, that's another good one. Quarantine, oh, I think we should all be watching that movie right now. And comedy, so you can see there's, there's some pretty interesting little shows here that you can see um, for free. This doesn't cost anything. I think there are some ads on there. So it does have TV, it does have movies. You can do a search and see what it, what's available. So yes, those are all some options there. Um, another option is Popcorn Flicks. These are full movies. Uh, they do have some commercials, but let's see what sort of ones they have. So you can see some of these you might've heard about. Uh, some of them might be new to you. Um, here you 
go. There's some of the newer ones that are out. So uh, again, any one of these uh, free, just ones that, that you know you might want to um, to watch. That's popcorn flicks. And here's one. Okay, so let's say you don't want to you don't want to live on candy. You really want to have some vegetables with your TV. So the top documentary films, this is really nice. And again, these are free and you could pick your category. You could search the, the site. Um, so these are things that you'll learn something behind. Um, and you can see just a, a great assortment of different things there. So this is your, uh, that's the free documentary site. So top documentary films. So these are all free. And I think we talked about Canopy a couple weeks ago when we were talking about um, things to do during our isolated period. If you have a library card, you can use that on Canopy to, uh, to rent certain movies like, like Moonlight. This is a, um, an excellent movie. It won, I think it won Best Picture. Um, so you can, you can see even new movies on, on Canopy, but you have to log in with your, um, your library card. All right, um, and then the final part of this is watching your, con watching your content. So you've done everything. You've got your router, you've got your internet service provider, you've got your antenna, you've subscribed to a couple of streaming services. Now, what do you do? Well, if you have a smart TV, it's pretty simple. You turn it on, you click on the app, Netflix or, or CNN or whatever you'll see there, and then you start watching it. Um, it, if it. If that app is missing for some reason, if you've just ordered Hulu and you don't see Hulu on there, you can go to the Play Store using your remote, you can download the Hulu app, and then you would have to sign up for it. So each of these ones that cost money you'll have to sign up either on your computer or using your remote control. If you have, um, if you can use your computer, I think that'd probably be easier because I've set them up with my remote control before. And once you start getting into passwords, it could be maddening trying to get that password and they're using the remote control. So sometimes it's easier to go online, but, but you do sign up and then, and then you're registered and then you can just watch movies just by clicking on the site. If you don't have a smart TV, you would plug your device in. You would probably you would have to set it up so that it would recognize your internet, and then you would it, and it would have to be on the same internet as your phone or your iPad, and then you would be able to stream from there. And then the third thing, like we said, is you can just take <clears throat> your device and plug it in. So you can plug it in via the the cable, the HDMI cable, or or <clears throat> or the or um, whatever else you have, and then you could watch it there. Okay, so that's it for the class. Um, does anyone wanna, I'm gonna unmute you. I'm gonna stop recording.